What's up, sports bettors? It's Matt Modai here with Ice Jam coming to you with some early MLB best bets for tomorrow's betting slate, Tuesday, August 23rd. Uh, for those of you who have been following along on this YouTube channel, know that I love getting in on early lines because I think if you can find a nice bet early before sports folks have really tightened up their lines, you can beat the closing line by a pretty decent amount and you can be profitable in the long run. Now, of course, you're not going to beat the closing line 100% of the time, but if you can do it, you know, over 50%, closer to 65, 70, 75%, that's how you can be profitable in the long run, beating the closing line by that amount. So, of course, for me, I always go on Oshdam, look at the positive expected value page, and that's kind of where I start my uh, betting day from. I see what e, uh, the EV page has, and I go from there. So specifically for this page, I just have the date range filtered custom date for tomorrow, so I can only find plays that are for tomorrow. Of course, using the new recommended filters. Um, these have been about a week or two old by now, for those of you who have not yet caught on or have uh, seen a video of me or Alex describing, the recommended filters essentially only provide betting opportunities that fit all of the criteria that Alex and I talk about in all of our videos, right? Market width, looking at the other books to see if it's an outlier, stuff like that. So that's what the recommended filters pay, um, the recommended filter button does. It only provides opportunities in which you're getting a true outlier across, excuse me, looking at all of the different books. So not just the Oshdam line, which is still the sharpest line in the world, but it takes into account other sharp books as well. So that's why the percent you see here is a little bit different than what it's been. It, the percent is now based off of a weighted average as opposed to just the Oshdam line. So it makes things a little bit safer. Basically, the goal being we are very confident that if you have enough of a sample size, like 250 bets placed directly from the Oshdam filters, you will be profitable after those 250 bets. For now, there's just one. For tomorrow's betting slate, we're looking at the yes run first inning in the Rays versus Angels game. This bet is plus 115 on Caesars. So let's go ahead and lock this in just a half unit play. Get this play locked in and let's chat about it. So again, the odds that I bet it at were plus 115 on Caesars. The odds damn line with the VIG removed prices this at about plus 113, plus 114. So not a huge gap between the odds jam line with the VIG removed and the odds that we bet it at on Caesars at plus 115. But this is still a positive expected value play. So a smaller percent here at 0.67%. So your profit margin is smaller on this one, but it's still something that is worthy of being bet. So I don't necessarily think you should shy away from these lower EV percents. They're still profitable if they're showing up on the recommended filters. I do think that they're worthy of being bet. And this one specifically, which I like about it, it's an arbitrage opportunity to pinnacle. So two odds damn line, the sharpest line in the world. You know that if there's ever a situation where there is an arbitrage opportunity, one of those books is going to be mispriced. In this case, since it's an arb opportunity to the odds damn line, we know that Caesars is the book that is mispriced here. We also know this because it's showing up with the recommended filters button selected that it is an outlier, not just to the odd jam line, but to other books as well. So just because you only see one other book here, in this case, it's FanDuel pricing this at minus 102. A, still pricing it closer to the odd jam line, which has it at minus 103, which is a good which is a good sign. But there are other books that might not show up on your page that are still being taken into account for the weighted average. So even if you see a play with the recommended filters that only have, let's say, one other book, it doesn't mean that it's just being compared to that one book. It's still taking into account the entire betting landscape, even if it's not one that you can see. So that's something that is really important to keep in mind. Uh, in this case, only charging 16 cents of market width, which is pretty good. So market width measures the difference of the OJTM line. So in this case, 13 plus three, because there are two minuses equals 16. Logic being the closer these two numbers are together, the more confident in what the OJTM line is and what they're pricing their lines at. So getting this one at 16, it's a pretty tight market. Really anything that is 25 and below is something that I like to look at in terms of a betting market for market width. Anything that is 15 below is a really tight market. So this one being at 16, not quite that 15 and below range, but still profitable. So I locked this one in 
for 50 bucks. Now let me just add this one to my bet tracker, click save. So everything is good to go there. It looks like a bunch of other plays showed up actually, funny enough. Um, but this play specifically, the yes run first inning in the Angels versus Rays. Uh, I like looking at the pitching matchup and stuff just to see what these uh, two batting, uh, the batting teams are going up against. Obviously, this isn't perfect and you need to look a little bit more than this, which I do on my own. But for the sake of the video, Corey Kluber, a couple years removed from his Cy Young year, not nearly as good as he was, 4.3 ERA, going against Jose Suarez, another pitcher above for ERA. So just looking at the pitching matchup, I can understand why this one is positive expected value. So again, I locked this one in just a half unit play, 50 bucks for now on the lower EV percent play. And that's going to be it for that one play. Let's look into, looks like there are two plays tomorrow that are both EV. And this is a good example to tell you what my strategy is for an example like this. Now there are multiple things you can do, and I'm not saying that what I do is the best, that's just my personal strategy. What I do is I look for a play that has the tightest market width. So in this case would be the under six and a half in the Athletics versus Marlins. Uh, the under five and a half is still a positive EV play, but it's got a wider market width at 28, which is why I'm deciding with the 16. Now I know there are people that would just take the highest EV percent, or there are people that would just take both and say, hey, you know what? It's positive expected value. I'm going to take it multiple times. And if it hits, then you're really sitting pretty. And if not, then, you know, one of those things that happens, it's just a bad part of a variance, bad part of sports betting that happens. But for me, like I said, I take the one with the tightest market. So this one being under six and a half total runs in the athletics versus Marlins plus 140 on Fandle. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm going to Fandle to lock this in. So I need to go to baseball. I need to go to tomorrow's betting slate, the Tuesday, the 13th. I'm looking for the, let's see, the Marlins versus the Athletics. Perfect. And I'm taking alternate run lines under six and a half should be plus 140. Perfect. Another half unit play for me. 50 bucks here. Click save and we're good to go. So this is the second betting play that I have for tomorrow highlights the importance of making sure that you're constantly refreshing the page and seeing what new betting opportunities are on there because odds change all the time. So being able to stay on top of these things is really important. I just refreshed it from the beginning of this recording. A play popped up. In this case, like I said, the play is plus 140 on FanDuel. Another 16 cents in market width, which is really tight. The uh, VIG, no VIG odds have this at plus 138, which gives you your lower, again, profit margin of 0.93%, but still worthy of being taken. And then if you look at the books, again, only have Caesars to compare to, but prices this even lower at plus 115 than the odds jam line does at plus 127. So clear outlier here, the FanDuel being at plus 140, which is why I locked this one in for a half unit play. So now, I'll just add this one to my bet tracker, click save, and those are going to be my two betting picks for tomorrow's slate. We are looking at the uh, yes run first inning in the Rays versus Angels and the under six and a half total runs in the Athletics versus Marlins. So if you're tailing those, let me know. I'd love to hear it. Love all the feedback. Other than that, please remember to like the video, uh, comment like I mentioned, subscribe to the IGM YouTube channel, and that's all I got for you guys. So thanks for watching and have a good one.